Hello and welcome to another episode of the Jersey Nerds Podcast. I'm Chris, joined today by Beepo. What's happening, Beepo? Just recording a podcast, Chris. How about you? Everything's pretty good. Uh, anyway, later on in the episode, we're going to continue our NHL team rundowns, going through the best and worst of a bunch of NHL franchises. Uh, today we've got the Devils, we've got the Quebec Nordiques, and we've got the old, original Winnipeg Jets to go through. Um, but first, we got some news going on. The Prince Albert Raiders have unveiled a, a 50th anniversary logo. And a, you know, normally when there's a logo unveiling, we just kind of, you know, stare at it and talk about it for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and give opinions and critiques and all that. Uh, we don't have to do that today. Today we get something a lot more special. As we are joined by the one and only Brooks Freeman, graphic designer from Manitoba, and he is going to talk about the uh, Prince Albert Raiders logo that he designed. It's, it's, it's not often you get the designer of the logo on the podcast to talk about it, um, but anyway, welcome Brooks. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, guys. So Brooks, you've been a contributor to HJC for quite a while. You've contributed to our concept corner now, you know, under our rebrand. So longtime viewers are likely familiar with your name, but what exactly is your background in design? Uh, well, yeah, basically I got my start kind of going on sportslogos.net on the uh, boards there. And then on definitely HJC helped me out a ton uh, with all the feedback on there and stuff. And so, yeah, I started just doing hockey concepts mostly on there in Microsoft Paint like can look back and I have some absolutely terrible concepts posted on the boards there but uh don't we all yep that's how it starts out it's how you get better right so uh yeah and then kind of just kept going at it and I've caught some good breaks I'll uh, admit that and once ended up I've won some contests online, which has definitely uh, helped get some exposure out there and uh, kind of turned in, it's turned into a pretty good side job for me now, career. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So regarding this uh, this Prince Albert Raiders logo, you know, go through the process for the for the listeners here. How you secured the, you know the opportunity to to do this because this is a you know this, this is a pretty cool thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was a pretty pretty awesome. Uh, opportunity I got here from the team started back uh, is last last January the team held a, a jersey design contest online for their it was one night just fan appreciation night it was their uh, season closer last season and uh, so yeah it was just fans could enter design a jersey and then they picked four finalists so I was picked as a finalist and then there was an online vote and I was uh, fortunate enough to have won that. So, and I actually, I, I drove up to Prince Albert. I'm only about six hours away. So went up there and uh, got to watch the game and got to meet some of the management when I was there. And uh, they liked my work. So they ended up uh, asking me to, to uh, about doing this uh, 50th anniversary logo for the uh, 20, 2021 season. And of course, I uh, couldn't turn that down. So, so once you got this opportunity, how exactly did the process of making the logo start? And like, how many iterations of the logo did you go through? Like, how many different options did you have from the beginning? Because, you know, um, I don't have a ton of experience working in a professional area, but from the little that I do, I know you go through many different iterations and levels of feedback. So, like, even how many different layout ideas did you guys start with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the main core of the logo was kind of always there. Like I, of course, I started out doing sketching for a little while and kind of trying to bring ideas in. The Raiders, uh, they didn't give me, like it wasn't a ton of input at first. They kind of just said, whatever, like you go ahead and you do kind of what you want and send it to us and we'll see what we think. And I know you also have a, yeah. like a little infographic on your Twitter. Um do you want to just plug your Twitter real quick? We'll let you plug it again towards the end of the segment. Just what's your Twitter real quick? Uh, I think it's uh, at Brooks Freeman three. Okay. I just like to let the guests plug it so we don't mess it up. Right. Um, one of your it, tweets, yeah. you have a little infographic explaining some of the meaning behind it, but do you want to go right. into detail on some of the design choices behind the design? Yeah, sure. Yep. We'll make sure to link to that, uh, that tweet in the, uh, the show notes as well. 
so everybody can go check that out. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, so back. Uh, do you want to go back to kind of the process or uh, the logo? I just, I mean, you've, you've touched on the process a little bit, maybe a little more into the, the, the process and a little more into, you know, the, the final results and, you know, all the different, uh, you know, meanings and significances behind it. Okay. Right. So, uh, yeah, the logo has a lot of uh, influence from the current Raiders brand with, uh, you know, the, the current word mark in the sword, like the, it kind of has the same shape as the current logo. And, uh, that's just because the Raiders have had so many different looks over the years. Like they had the, uh, like you know, the guy with the hockey stick in back in the '80s, and then the pirate with the sword in the mouth in the '90s and 2000s. Now they've gone onto this sword brand. So I think uh, it's just to kind of connect it to the fans, especially like younger fans, can connect to the logo a lot more in Prince Albert uh, now than and trying to fit all those different identities into one logo really i don't think would have worked out well so uh so yeah and then we got what a lot of people asked about was the stars in the logo uh so the one green star is the Memor one memorial cup for the raiders the two gold stars are for uh the two whl championships and the four white stars are uh for the sjhl championships back when the team was in junior a because this is their 50th anniversary of being a team since they were like they started out in as a junior a team they haven't been 50 50 years in the whl yeah i'll be honest i'm not super keen on you know my junior hockey history so uh until i saw you know your little graphic on the uh meaning behind the logo and especially those stars i had no right. idea about that so i think that's a really nice detail in there right. that's you know it's not gonna um how do i word this it's not you know it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb, but it's just perfectly implemented. You know, it's subtle, but it's there, if yeah, that makes thanks. any sense. Yeah, that was actually an idea of the, uh, the Raiders. That was, I guess, that wasn't in the first version I ever sent them of it. I think I just had two gold stars in there because I, and I maybe had the green star in there because just for the WHL and the Memorial Cup championships, but then they wanted the stars for the SJ championships too, which I, yeah, I like that too. Sure. Yeah. So, what what was your you you talked about you know some of the freedom you were given with the creation of this. Uh, what was the relationship like you know with the organization throughout this entire uh, process? Uh, it was very good. I mean, they were very good at responding and uh, giving good feedback. You know, they you know they really liked the idea from the start. Uh, the original version of this logo I sent them, and we just kind of tweaked around like with the number. The number 50 went through a couple iterations, like different fonts. The font in there is uh, the same font that the Raiders use for their the back of their jerseys, the numbers and stuff. So another little tie into the current brand. And uh, yeah, overall, I mean, they were great. They were very good when I was up in Prince Albert. They treated me very well and uh, hope I, I'm hoping I can keep working with them on for future projects from now on. Seems like uh they've enjoyed my work so far so hoping i can stay in with them yeah you mentioned earlier too um that you know you did the you ended up winning the contest to design their uh that uh fan appreciation jersey last year right. uh which led to this opportunity but you also mentioned to us that you uh got the opportunity because of that to design the one that was supposed to be worn for this year which unfortunately was not due to covid-19 uh yeah. shutting everything down um, and I believe you said that was going to be worn next year at this point, some point, right? Yes. Yeah. As far as you're was, aware. Uh, yeah. The, the game, I think the season was canceled about four or five days before the Jersey was supposed to be worn. So they had them all in. I think they put some pictures up on social media and stuff and, uh, fan reactions seemed pretty positive. It's, uh, it's kind of meant to be originally it was an idea for like an alternate Jersey for next year. Um, which who knows, maybe they'll end up using it as that, but it, it, uh, it uses the old, the, uh, black gold green color scheme and, uh, the logo on the front is an updated version of the, it's a, like a Raiders script from the original logo back in the SJ days. So, uh, I think a lot of people really liked that and 
yeah, they're supposed to be wearing it uh, apparently for a game next season. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. And you know, speaking of the uh, the next season, when whenever that may be in the uh, WHL, um, if, if any idea on how this this logo is going to be used, going to be implemented, you know, because some teams will do different things with a shoulder patch or a chest right. patch or, or putting it even putting it at center ice. So, uh, any ideas on on what that might look like? Right. Um, I don't completely know, but I'm guessing probably center ice because that's uh, most teams that I've ever seen for anniversary logos, they will put that on the center ice, which is cool. I actually, uh, a couple of years back there, I won the online contest for the uh, South Carolina Stingrays there. It was hosted by Aesthetics. And so I actually got to go down to South Carolina and uh, watch that too. And seeing that logo at center ice was pretty pretty cool experience so i'm hoping uh this one will be the same uh r- real quick are there any contests you have yet to win that you've entered <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah no i i tend to enter like i mean you can see the opportunities that can come from the right so i tend to enter as many as i can it's uh yeah it's i've got that's a big these contests are great they're a big part of uh where i am today I'm very fortunate to have had, to have that. Yeah, I was going to say, save some opportunities for the rest of us, man. <laughs> You're taking them all up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, speaking of that, I believe that you were uh, uh, a finalist in the ECHL All-Star Jersey competition. Is that right. correct? Yeah. Has, has the winning design been announced yet? Y- yeah, yeah, I think it did. Yeah, I didn't make it past the first round in that one. So, I mean, it, <laughs> it's, yeah, you know, you win some, you lose a lot more so it's uh, those contests they are kind of a they can be a crapshoot at times right it's just when you put up the online votes you never know what's going to happen who's going to like it or whatever so it's but if you can't win if you can't enter right so okay i'm going to be honest whenever i saw finalists i thought you were one of the last two i kind of missed the part where it was like a round thing no I, yeah i yeah, admit like i a... didn't follow along with that all-star uh, competition very right. well yeah it was like a structured <laughs> tournament thing and yeah, you know, my de- okay. my design just got <laughs> it got kicked in the first round, so but no big deal. I mean, hey, being selected at all is probably a bit of an accomplishment as well, yep. huh? Yeah, maybe not sure. a quite as much as uh, some of the other opportunities <laughs> you've got, but still something to be proud of. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was gonna say, ignoring all the work where you've been, you know gotten kicked out in the first round or whatever, um, you've you've done a ton of incredible um other work, so just um. You know, if you would take a minute to talk about some of the the other opportunities you've gotten to do besides this this Prince Cyber logo, and you touched on a couple of things. Um, but what are you know some of the bigger projects you've done, and what are the ones that you you're you're really most proud of that you're like, wow, this was really cool to do. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, well, the, I mean, this this Raiders one is definitely going to be up there. Uh, the uh, the Stingrays, like I mentioned, that one was really really cool because, like I said, I. I got to go down to South Carolina um, in like December, so that was pretty nice at that time, nicer than Manitoba, and uh, and uh, I got to see the logo being used in an ECHL in the center of an ECHL rink, and you know got a bunch of merchandise with it. I still have all that. That's super cool. A uh, couple other thing uh, back home. There's the Dauphin Kings. They're a uh, their junior A team in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. I got to uh, rebrand them two seasons ago. And so I get to see them, my hometown, uh, also as a team. So I get to see Dauphin come. I get to see those jerseys and the logo being worn all the time, which is awesome. Um, another contest when I was 18, I uh, won the Boston Pizza. Uh, design a goalie mask uh, challenge Uh, so I got to see my goalie mask worn uh, in the world juniors which you know that was you know I got to see it on tv in a game that was being viewed by millions of people which was pretty pretty amazing feeling too Um, and then looking to the future uh, I do I can't say anything right now but in the next couple months there is one more uh, pretty big announcement coming uh, that I look forward to being revealed and uh, everybody getting to be able to see it. 
seems like uh, to some degree you live a lot of our dreams as a uh, you know concept designers and graphic designers you've got a lot of great opportunities and a lot of you know right. work to look on and be proud of mm-hmm. but um you also um you know are seem to be very interested in curling you have quite a few curling designs on your uh on your pages um yep. And I remember your old logo, your own, your old personal brand used to be curling based. Yeah. Do you want to touch on kind of your curling interest a little bit and some of the design work you've done, you know, in sure. that uh, realm rather than the hockey area? Sure. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, curling is a really big part of my life. Like I am competitive curler out of Manitoba through all the winter months and I guess the fall too. And uh, I don't know. I haven't actually played hockey since I was about 14 like played hockey up through minor hockey but and I really don't even I don't really follow the NHL the hockey or anything at all anymore like I I'm I'm a hockey design fan more than a hockey fan I guess I'm pretty much a really big curling fan and so yeah through through competitive curling and all that I've gotten to know a lot of uh, competitive professional curlers and that's led to uh, some great opportunities to design some logos for uh, some professional high up curling teams, uh, which has been really, really cool. And uh, the curling community is pretty tight, so word spreads quickly. So kind of seems like, you know, somebody sees a logo and another team will say, you know, I like that. Uh, and then they'll come to me, which is always good. So it that's really helped grow my brand also uh all these curling logos are really you know it's 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 fun because i get to see all these teams uh wearing stuff on tv that i designed too awesome stuff it's all about networking ain't it yep (laughs) i gotta say too um I'm I'm a big fan of the uh, Southern California Curling Center logo. I just love the color palette on that one. Yeah, thanks. That's one that stands out to me personally. I'll say I completely agree. That's an absolutely beautiful one. And um, Brooks has a huge logo portfolio. You can check it out on his website that I'm sure he'll plug in a minute or two. Um, but you know, what do you, what do you say to to people that see all this amazing you know, work that you do and think, gosh, I want to do something like that, or I want to get involved in this kind of stuff, you know, what are some, you know, words of encouragement to people who, who, who want to do something like that? Um, I would say just wherever you are right now, just keep uh, practicing, keep, obviously get like contacts are a huge thing, right? And uh, just keep practicing. I know of like back when I was a huge contributor to HJC, like I, when I was really into hockey jersey concepts there, you know, every spare period I had, I was going home and I was designing hockey jerseys all the time. I just, I loved doing that. And eventually that led into when I bought Illustrator, you know, in all my spare time, I was just practicing designing logos and designing mascot logos and stuff. And I know I still have a long way to go even with that stuff. I, I still would like to learn how to draw better and stuff and always just keep trying to improve. And uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to be a sports designer, you definitely can because there's lots of great inspiration online. There's lots of, lots of people you can look up to. Uh, yeah. Pretty friendly community overall, I'd say too. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, being, for sure. you know, in the community. Yeah. A lot of, of great, positive encouragement. Lots of great feedback sportslogos.net is the the boards for that like yeah post your work online too is another one like don't uh doesn't matter how bad you think it is or because yeah like i said the earliest stuff i was posting on uh sportslogos.net i think i was probably 15 at the time like it's really really awful but it uh it's i i like looking back through my history of my my threads on there on sportslogos.net because you can just see the improvement kind of going up in every one. And uh, yeah, it's just awesome to look back at. I was going to say, I still remember the first graphic that I ever created was like, uh, it was an edit of James Neal whenever he was still in the Penguins. I took a very low res picture on my phone, put some weird border on it, 
and a, a very generic uh, font on it that just said James Neal 18 and some like Instagram filters and called it a day. Uh, that's the first thing that I ever designed. And I, I hardly want to call it designed, but it's just everybody starts somewhere, you know? Yep. So no matter how old you are right now, whenever you're listening to this, no matter where you are, you know, there's always a lot of room for improvement. And, you know, you can easily, you know, with some hard work and some time put in, you can easily, you know, get to anywhere that you want to be. And Brooks, you've, you've definitely gotten yourself to a really incredible place, you know, incredible job on the, you know, the Prince Albert 50th uh, yeah. logo. Thank you. I think we can all agree it looks looks absolutely amazing. Um. Thank you for taking the time to be on with us. Um, go ahead and plug your socials, plug your website, plug whatever you want people to know about. Sure, thanks. Uh, yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter. It's uh, Brooks Freeman Design or at Brooks Freeman Three. Uh, same with Instagram. It is a uh, just Brooks Freeman Design, and then uh, my website is brooksfreeman dot com. And uh, on there, you can check out uh, my logo portfolio. Uh, and then I do have a lot. I have another page on there called Sports Team Projects, which uh, goes into a little more in depth of my bigger projects. You can see some of the logos, you know, being used in real life and stuff. We're gonna stick all these links down in the description as well. But um, just for anybody listening, I'm gonna clarify since I've got your Instagram page pulled up. It's Brooks underscore Freeman underscore Design, just to make it easier for everybody to find. You got anything else, Beepo? <laughs> I think I'm good. Brooks, you got any last words? Uh, no, I think I'm good too. Uh, thanks a lot for having me, guys. It's, uh, I've been a listener of this podcast for a little while, and of course I've been at HJC for a while, and it's yeah, it's just it's nice to finally uh, be on here. It's it's pretty cool. Huge thanks for, for coming on and uh, talking about all the uh, awesome stuff you've done. No, thanks a lot for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. So that was our interview with Brooks Freeman, the designer of the WHL's Prince Albert Raiders 50th anniversary logo. Um, you know, great guy, great discussion with him, and uh, we really appreciate him coming on. Um, anywho, we're going to continue on with the episode today, continue on with our NHL team rundown series. Woohoo! Yay! Um, today we've got the uh, New Jersey Devils, we've got the Quebec Nordiques, and the Winnipeg Jets, the OG winnipeg jets that is uh we're going through the best and worst favorite least favorite uniforms for every uh, nhl franchise been going through a bunch of them we're going through in reverse chronological order of when they started and so we got the devils beginning in 82 and the nordiques and jets part of the wha uh, merger in 1979 uh the reason we won't go with those two today instead of the um the Oilers and the Whalers, which also began the same year, is because these teams ended first. The Nordiques stopped existing in 95, and the Jets stopped existing as they were in 96. Anywho, um, some kind of interesting jersey histories to get through here, some really subtle differences throughout all these teams, and so it'll be fun to get into uh, here with Beepo today. What's up again, Beepo? You still there? Uh, still just recording a podcast, Chris. How about you? Uh, I'm still just listening to Beepo recording a podcast. And you guys are listening to Beepo recording a podcast as well. Isn't, isn't that amazing? They all, every single listener. Yes, I'm talking to you. You keep listening to Beepo recording a podcast. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing. To waste no further time, the New Jersey Devils, who started play in 1982, moving from Kansas City uh, by route, by way of Denver. The uh, You had the Colorado Rockies, and then you had the, the Kansas City Scouts, I believe, and they turned into the New Jersey Devils, who have made a much more of a history of their own. Um, so yeah, from 82 until today, and they've had really consistent jerseys throughout their history from 82 to 92 they had a red green and white look um it went to red black and white and looked you know basically the same from 1992 until 2017 you know aside from the um moving of that look to the Reebok edge system which didn't do a ton to you know 
um, improve or to ruin the look. It really kept it the same. And then um, in 2017, um, probably their most significant change, other than changing their color scheme back in the uh, back in the 90s, was made. Um, and that was you know switching up their striping and removing the uh, the striping from the hem for the you know Adidas look that we've had for the past few years. Um, of course, they've had some some stadium series, some heritage uh, uniforms as well, but those are you know basically based on the uh, the 80s uniforms. And so, you know, n- not a ton of different looks from New Jersey, but that all that makes it all the more fun to debate, which is better. So, Beepo, what do you say is the best jersey of all time for the New Jersey Devils? Before I go into that, I want to get off a gripe that I have with New Jersey. And I'm not talking about the team. I'm talking about the state. And it absolutely does not deserve this uh, gripe that I have with it. Um, because, you know, I am clearly uh, interested in hockey jerseys and sports jerseys. Uh, and, you know, I am a Jersey nerd, uh, as we are called. Um, and the, b- that being said, I type in the phrase New Jersey or New Jerseys into my phone a lot whenever I'm not referring to the state. However, my phone thinks that it only exists as the state and it tries to capitalize it every single time. And I don't know how to fix that. If anybody happens to know how to fix it, that would be appreciated. But anyways, um, I th- the the Devils don't have much to pick from for sure, but they have some iconic looks. And I think the quintessential Devils jersey is probably their uh, red one, uh, you know, the 92 to 17 one. I'm just going to lump them together. The only difference there is the edge template. Um, other than that, they're the same. Um, but I think, you know, their their best white one, I'd probably give to the inaugural one slash their current heritage one just because there's more color in it and the uh other the black ones are the red and black ones are a little too black for my tastes but you know overall the red one especially at least to me is just the best one because it's that iconic look that they've raised cups in and uh you know at least in that set have they raised the cup in the red jersey or just the white one I want to say they raised it in the red jersey at least once, although we're going to have to look that up. I really can't tell you off the top of my head. But yeah, either way, they've raised cups in that jersey set, so the red one from that set is definitely my pick for their best of all time just because, you know, it's a great look, uh, plus it's kind of got that legacy from the cups behind it. Yep, and I can now confirm that the Devils did lift the Stanley Cup in at least 2,000 um, in the red jerseys. Okay, because I know I, I remember seeing a lot of pictures of them lifting it in the white ones. I didn't know. I wasn't sure if they'd ever done it in the reds. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Um, yeah, I cannot disagree with you. Their their 92 to, to 17 look is definitely their most, you know, timeless, their most iconic. Um, the, the, the red jersey, you know... It, it it is a step above the um the the white jersey, but that white jersey is definitely you know really really nice, and you know I have to say that it's funny because their their Adidas redesign you know it's significant enough where you think yeah this is a definite change, um you know in the the thickness of the stripes and the uh, removal of the striping from the hem, and you know but th- that Adidas template does make their current look you know it it looks really clean it looks really nice. Um, but it's, you, you just can't deny the, the, the lasting impact and the, you know, the kind of traditional aesthetic that they had from, from 92 until 2017. And I'm, you know, I'm not discounting the, the red and, and green look, but I feel like, you know, the, uh, on, on that, that 82 to 92 home jersey is definitely a lot going on, um, as compared to, um, the, the away jersey and now the, the heritage uniform, um, but yeah, so I think I think we can agree that their their ninety two to seventeen red jersey is their best. Um, yeah, on that note, let's move on to what's what's the worst jersey they New Jersey has ever had. I've got to give it to their current set on that one, and specifically the white one because again, it's very black heavy and not super colorful. And I mean, honestly, again, the Devils don't have much to pick from. But I don't think they've ever had a bad jersey from the ones that they've had. I think their current ones are mediocre to kind of good at best, depending on how you look at it. I'm not a big fan of them because I I don't I think removing the hem stripes was a really poor decision. Um, I don't think this is the type of jersey that works without a hem stripe very well. 
Um, even like if they had the thicker stripes and a hem stripe, I think it would be miles above what they have now. But again, they're not bad. They're just mediocre at worst, honestly. So they don't have much to pick from, and they have a pretty strong catalog from the few that they do. Um, so I think that just kind of leaves the current ones as the worst by default. I think they just kind of, they broke what wasn't, or they fixed what wasn't broken, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, just, just looking at the jerseys initially, you know, initially I thought, oh, that, that you know, initial red jersey from 82 to 92, the red and green and the white. I'm like, yeah, there's a lot going on. The, the, the striping is, a, you know, it was really strange. Um, but when, you, you know, you look at images of that on the ice, it looks really nice. You can't deny that that red and green works really well. And so I'm going to have to agree with you. I think I will honestly go and say that the current red jersey is worse than the current white jersey. I mean, it's something about the, the the white stripes being the same thickness as the black stripe now that just really makes that white, you know, pretty overpowering. And it, it, it doesn't feel as much like New Jersey anymore. Um, you know, I'm not against the, the, the away jersey, you know, being a little black heavy, you know, especially with, you know, red numbers as they've always had. And so, um, yeah, that that's my take on that. I think, you know, I agree, you know, fixing things that, that aren't broken, ad- adjusting the thickness of the stripes that really didn't need to change at all. It's change for the sake of change. And um, that's, that's where we stand on that. So I don't, I don't think we have to go very far to determine any kind of ideal jersey for New Jersey, because I, I don't know about you, but I think what they had from 92 to 07 – at least for me, is is pretty close to, if not exactly, an ideal jersey for this team and for this brand. Yeah, I agree. Um, but looking at some pictures, too, from this year of the uh, current Heritage uniforms, the white version, um, I, I honestly love the way that it looks with the jersey being very red-heavy. Um, so I would be very intrigued to see that uh, in black instead of green, just as kind of like a, you know, mix of the eras using their current colors as an older template and adding a little bit more color to it. I'd be intrigued to see it, but the quintessential Devils jerseys are that 92 to 17 set. I mean, even though I'm not a huge fan of how black heavy that road is, I can't deny that it's, you know, iconic because they won cups and it's just, it's iconic. It's quintessential Devils that I, I don't know what else to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me being an, an LA Kings fan, I definitely remember, you know, seeing those jerseys in the uh, 2012 Stanley Cup final and yeah, they they looked good. You know, that that those were the Devils. And so um you know what what they have now, you you see them on the ice in their current set and they still look like the Devils, but you know something's just a little off. Something's just a little not right. I just realized how colorless the games in LA must have been with LA's black jerseys and the Devils having those primarily black road jerseys. Almost every game in L.A. is pretty colorless at this point, considering you have a a black home jersey, a white away jersey, and a gray alternate. It's, um... Yeah. Does it look clean? Sure. Is it dark and depressing? A little. Can't deny that. It's not even like the Kings of a black jersey with a lot of color, like the Penguins or the Bruins or something like that. It's just black, white, and gray. And if you know me, I'm not a fan of that at all. I like my color. Yeah, but based on the outcome of that 2012 Stanley Cup final, I can't complain. And oh yeah, I, mean, I think to. I've said I think I've said on the podcast before. If the Penguins won those three cups that they won, and if anybody's listening for the first time, I'm a Pens fan. If they won those three cups that they won, you know, within my lifetime, uh, wearing practice jerseys that are plain colors with a logo on it i i don't care it's the stanley cup you know i'll take it (laughs) and honestly i mean they won two of those cups in god-awful jerseys and i hate those jerseys but i look back on them somewhat fondly just because they won cups in them that's it you know they hold a sentimental place in my heart but i still think they're awful Yeah, it amazes me that LA, you know, won their their first cup, twenty twelve. You know, basically the, the year after they completely got rid of of purple from their color scheme. And it's just like, yeah, this is sad, but like you associate 
Cup winning jerseys with iconic memories, no matter how bad they are, because sometimes they're <sighs> terrible. If, if, if you're a fan yeah. of any sports team and they win a championship in a terrible jersey, it's just like, it's it's just so sad. It really is. And like the Capitals winning in 2018, um, they did not wear, they were not wearing good jerseys in that one. We'll get to the Capitals later on in our series, of course, but that is a bit down the line. Absolutely, yeah. I think that should be, you know, that, that'd be a good discussion to have on the podcast sometime, just talking about what, ranking the worst jerseys to win a sports championship. I, I will just say that I'm glad that the Penguins, um, for one, I, I, you know, they obviously had their change in our, after the 2016 Cup. I They had that ready ahead of time, and they knew they were doing that way before they won the Cup. But I'm glad that they went through with it and didn't say, we won another cup in this. We're going to keep it, you know? And then they won a cup again. So look at that, you know? Now now that jersey has uh, some cup pictures with it, too. Worked out, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A cup's a cup, and you'll take it any day. Yes, indeed. Okay, so let's go from talking about Stanley Cup winning jerseys to a team that never won a cup, at least not until they moved and took on a completely different name which i think is awful that's just really sad anywho wasn't it like the, the year after too it was it was literally the year after they moved which i'm sorry anyone in quebec we're talking about the quebec nordiques who um joined the nhl in 1979 and the, the wha merger they spent seven seasons in the wha before um, being in the nhl for as long as they were and in 1996, they moved to Denver, became the Colorado Avalanche, and won the Cup that year as the Avalanche. So, I, 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 I can't even imagine how much that would have hurt to anyone that was a Quebec Nordiques fan. So, I'm, I'm very sorry to, to anyone out there. Um, anywho, talking about the, the jersey history of the Quebec Nordiques, we are going to take into consideration some of the uh, WHA jerseys that they wore, um, considering that they don't have a very varied um, jersey history, because um, in their uh, time in the NHL, the very few significant changes um, after their first year in the NHL, they kind of uh, they changed their logo slightly as far as the, the coloring of it on the, the blue jersey. Um, and then their only really other significant change, um, besides, you know, striping on the pants, um, was in the nineties, um, adding a slight, you know, red outline to their numbers, but otherwise they've had this really nice, um, you know, medium light, light blue, a, a red and white. And I think they've always had a clean look, but anyway, let's, uh, get into a Beepo as to, to what their actual best Jersey is. This one's kind of a tough one for me. Because, I mean, I'm not a, as big of a fan as their, you know, classic NHL jerseys as everybody else is. Uh, the more I look at them, the more I realize that they're very plain, aside from what's going on in the hem. Um, and I say this is a fan of Montreal Throw jersey as well. It's tough to, it's almost weird to compare them considering, you know, the rivalry these teams had. But they're both very plain with not much going on in the arms and something going on in the hem. The only difference is Montreal was that yoke. Um, but the WHA jersey, some of the original ones, are a little bit overly busy, I think. Um, there's a lot going on with hem stripes, arm stripes, and a yoke. And I, I think those ones are a little bit too busy for me the more that I look at them. So I'm, I'm going to just go with their classic blues. Um, and I picked this over the white. I'll get into it later. I think the white looks a little bit more plain than the blue one. Um, but I'll de- I think I'm going to take the blue one for sure the you know the jersey that you think of when you think of Quebec Nordiques mm-hmm. and uh, again a huge shout out to um to Andrew Greenstein who set up nhluniforms.com where we get to see um every NHL team's jersey history um as well as WHA uniforms.com that allow us to see the history of the uh, WHA jerseys that are allowing us to to view all these um pre-NHL histories for the um, Nordiques and for other WHA teams. Um, See, so yeah, Bipo, I'm, I'm going to have to agree with you. I mean, it's, it, when you're looking at NHL jerseys for the Nordiques, it's basically, hey, do you like a red outline on their numbers or not? Um, 
And and I think honestly the 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 jersey looks a little cleaner without it. Um, you you know you have the the large amount of red on the logo, and it's it's not anywhere else. So I understand why they added that red outline um, to the numbers in '91. Um, but that 1980 to 1991 look, which is basically the same, um, you know, the slight change with the placement of the uh, fleur de lis or whatever on the um, the the hem strapping itself. Um, but you know, other than that, you know, I, I can't get over how nice of a color blue that they had. And, um, you know, I, I think it's a, it's a shame that they, that their brand, you know, really, you know, I think the brand still lives on and I, but the, you know, the team's not around anymore. And it's, uh, I think that's sad because I think they had, uh, you know, something really nice, something unique to their area. Um, you know, really, really going for them. And on that note, let's uh, looking through both the WHA and NHL histories. Um, what's what's the worst jersey that the Quebec Nordiques ever wore? I was originally going to say the white jersey from the set that I picked the best one of, just because the more that I looked at it, the more it looked very middle heavy with the blue pants and the blue hem stripe in there, um, and nothing going on on the top really, um. But, again, the more that I look at the WHA ones, too, they're just so busy, they look so dated. It's all, it's really tough to put those ones ahead. Um, so I, I don't, I think I'll go with the, I believe it was would have been the 73 to 75 ones, um, just because they use a less unique shade of blue on those ones, um, and they're still very busy. But it... it the the Nordiques, the more I look at it, are just such they have such a really strange jersey history. Honestly. They they really do have a, a strange history as far as the different um you know shades of blue they use throughout their history. I mean in the WHA, um, their first year, they have they had an incredible I'm gonna call it an incredible jersey that's you know powder blue and red. And uh, but the next two years, um, and I will agree with Beepo that this 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 jersey, the 1973 to 75 look, um, which really had you know, basically a um, a Winnipeg Jets color scheme, um, it's probably their 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 worst look overall in the WHA. And it was it was from there I think in 75 that they switched to um, something similar to what they wore in the NHL. Um, which underwent a slight redesign in, in 1980 when they were in the NHL. Um, so yeah, re- really interesting jersey history there. The, the 73 to 75 is definitely their their worst look. It's uh, I'll, I'll say the white jersey is worse. It's weird because you got a large you know blue hem stripe with a little red, and then you have a, like a, a giant red yoke on there. Um, I, I will call myself a fan of their 1972-73 WHA set. I mean, it's I feel like you get like Philadelphia Phillies baseball vibes from seeing a powder blue jersey with white and red on it. And that's, you know, not a bad thing. Um, you know, if we're, we're talking about just NHL, um, I might might say that their 1979 um, NHL de- debut blue jersey is probably their worst just because the, the change they made to the logo in 1980, making the away and home logos look the same was definitely a good move. And, um, you know, it's one of those things where you don't know something looks better until you see it. And so I think them having the, the red logo on there, despite not having red really anywhere else, was uh, was definitely good for them. Yeah, I think the uh, red logo on both jerseys is better, but I certainly don't mind the white logo on the blue jersey. Um, it's just, a, especially if you're looking at NHLuniforms.com, the proportions on that logo from the 79-80 uh, set are a little bit odd compared to the update. Just, I guess, is it pro- it's probably just because it's what we're used to. But I don't really like the proportions on that one as much. So if you just slot the colors on the, you know, their most recent logo before they moved, um, I don't think I would have hated that in white. Should we also throw in a little bit of discussion about the uh, scrapped jerseys in there as well? That they were going wear until they move to Colorado. I think we absolutely should throw in a discussion about those. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the uh, 
the jerseys that the Quebec Nordiques um, had planned to use at some point in their history, had planned to use had they not um, moved to Colorado. Um, it, for the 95, 96, there, there, there was an entire rebrand planned that was going away from the, the blue, white, and red, and instead going to navy, black, and teal with white. And um, there was a completely redesigned logo that had this very angular, geometric-looking husky. Um, I, I, I don't want to call it peak 90s design, but it's pretty up there as far as uh, 90s design. Um, so, a, uh, excuse me, for the 96-97 season is when these were would have taken effect had the team not moved. And... Um, I'm I'm just gonna first say this would have been an absolute travesty, in my opinion, because um, you know Nordiques, you know it, at least perhaps time has done this. We see it as a really classic look, as a really quintessential look for the the NHL at that time, and this would have taken that and just thrown it completely out the window. Um, had this you know navy teal and black look um, actually gone into effect, I feel like it would be one of those really popular retro throwback jerseys these days um but since it, it never did i think it's you know kind of been um f- not not forgotten in history but you know d- definitely criticized as much as it deserves to be i feel like uh now that you bring that up if they did end up using it it would have had like fish stick type of appeal you know absolutely like you know it's you know it's ugly. You know you know it's ugly. You know it's terrible, but you like it because it is. I mean, to be honest, looking at the jerseys in a vacuum, I like them. Like the pattern, and I like especially on that dark one, the way the white uh, upper arms stand out. But it's just it the color scheme, especially while it looks nice, I think it's just it was just trendy. I mean. I guess is that like a purplish? I guess kind of. It's it's definitely a, a a navy that they were going for, but with black, it, it with looks teal, slightly with purplish. White. Yeah, the teal especially. It's just it's trendy. That's all it really was. Um, even though I think in a vacuum it looks okay, I'm not you know hopping on a trend like that, as we've seen by the way that we look at them now. We literally do, are just like yeah, that just was trendy. That's it. That's the only reason they exist. You know. Yeah, because we talked about you know the sharks, you know reintroducing that color to the NHL in the early '90s, and all the the, the things that they were able to, to sell with them. And I think of you know around that time in the NHL, what what other teams are doing that? You, I mean, you had the Islanders bring in the, the fishermen that had a little little bit of that in there. Um, let's say you no, know, even even the Capitals when they switched their their color scheme, um, were, were, were kind of piggybacking off you know going for something something different some 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 unique shade of blue um you know if not teal just just to try to you know i feel like so many teams made the mistake of you know completely changing their color scheme just to try to you know get people's attention just to try something different instead of embracing you know simplicity instead of embracing tradition just kind of following trends and and uh, you know kind of getting lost in them Ah, the 90s, a time of teal uh, and black for black sake. Indeed. Well, I'd say the 2000s were a lot of black for black sakes, too. But, but uh, Yeah, I think it just kind of bled over from the 90s, though, really. Yeah, I'd say you're right there. Um, Man, just anyways. like looking at some of like the late 90s and just how many black or navy jerseys are in the league at that point. Wow. It's It's incredible. But also, um, with these Quebec jerseys, imagine that they never moved. They wore these jerseys, and the season went exactly the same, and they won the cup in these jerseys the first season. Oh my gosh. Just imagine. Wait, okay, so wait, what what, what year did Colorado win the cup? Was it 95-96 or 96-97? Weren't we saying that it was the first year after they moved? Yeah, so that would have been ninety five, ninety six, and the Quebec jerseys apparently would not have taken effect until the season after. So we would have been spared. Oh wait, those Quebec jerseys weren't supposed to be for the season they moved. It was supposed to be the season after. No, I, I think that. No, I think I think I think I 
read some of that they were they were supposed to be that they would have taken effect in 96 97 and so oh. had they won the cup in 95 96 we would have you know had not an eyesore that would have been really interesting you know would they have gone ahead with it had they won a cup because you know teams have definitely done that we talked about pittsburgh doing that um the nfl i think of the st louis rams completely changing after they win a win a championship um so yeah really interesting speculation there what would quebec have looked like and would they have won a cup if they were in Quebec? Yeah, I always thought those things were supposed to take effect the season that they moved and not, you know, the season afterwards. So if anyone can confirm, uh, we can do our own research maybe after the show just to confirm this for sure. Um, indeed, absolutely. Uh, currently, we're using the um, very reliable source of Wikipedia, <laughs> um, <laughs> which which cites an article from thehockeynews.com. So anyway, if anybody has any d- deep digging, um, yeah, it lo- looks like I'm I'm seeing in, from browsing the internet and things like that. Apparently, there was a headline that said Nordiques will have a new look in '96 '97. Um, okay, well, if you found actual headlines on it, I trust that. Then <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, lo- looks like it. Yeah, um, looks like looks like that came out in April '95, but then they never played that following season in Quebec. They moved to Colorado, became the Avalanche, and won a freaking Stanley Cup. Apologies for my language. Um, but yeah, as far as an ideal jersey for Quebec, um, I'd say it's not their 90s redesign. <laughs> um, honestly, I'd say, in my opinion, I think they're either their 80 to 89 look or their 1989 to 91 look, you know, had nailed it. There's just, you know, minor differences on those. Um, I personally am too young to have seen these, you know, in, in game action. Um, so I'm not sure how much of a difference there was between them, but you know, I think we, we can all look back and say, yeah, they had a really good solid look to them. Yeah. I think ideal Jersey wise, I think you take, you know, what they wore for essentially their entire NHL existence. And I think that there's a little bit more that you can add to it. I feel like a blue yoke on that white Jersey would go a long way. Um, but other than that, I think that they do have a good foundation, uh, even if the jerseys aren't perfect. And I definitely think they're overrated, but I don't think they're bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't I don't hate your opinion on a blue yoke, but I don't like it either. Like, I, I feel like it's, it's, it's hard to add. Like, so some jerseys just look really timeless without them, I feel like. And if you if you add it in there, it can, you know change that a little bit and maybe throw off the uh, the color balance slightly not always in a bad way um and i feel like that would make it a little you know i feel like white jerseys that don't have yokes sometimes they look you know just really clean really nice you know i think of buffalo's 50th anniversary you know because uh, i think your your logic is always oh we want more of our color in there but you know sometimes you don't need it oh no i agree with you for sure there uh i usually think that especially in a lot of concept designs people way overuse uh, shoulder yokes and they're often unnecessary. But just the more that I look at action photos of this white jersey, the more it just looks so plain up top because that hemistripe blends into the blue pants and it's just all contained in that middle area. I feel like it could use something to balance it out. And normally, again, I'm not, I, I think uh, yokes and especially in concepts are way overused but I think this is a case where it might work out pretty well, at least in my head. I don't know how it would work out in application. I haven't tried it, but in Solution. my head. Solution, white pants. <laughs> they, they'd have been way ahead of their time. Indeed. And now that we've agreed on that point, uh, I think that's enough discussion on Quebec. Uh, let's go over to one of the other teams that moved from the WHA to the NHL, and that is the original Winnipeg Jets. Who started the NHL seventy nine, last played ninety five ninety six before becoming the Phoenix Coyotes. It's a weird move from Winnipeg to Phoenix. Can you imagine like a person moving from Winnipeg, Canada to Phoenix, Arizona? Like you might uh, die of temperature shock. <laughs> Honestly, though, <laughs> you might. Um. Any anywho, yeah, pretty interesting jersey history for the Jets. They had you know basically the same look throughout their WHA history using, um, you know, uh, d- dark blue, red, white, pretty simple. And then um, when they moved to the, the NHL, 
uh, they kept the colors, but they redesigned the uniforms um, pr pretty pretty completely. Um, from seventy nine until ninety, they had you know basically the same look. The difference being a uh, a number font after nineteen eighty on, and then through ninety through ninety six, they uh you know simplified the uniforms a bit. They went from um, you know kind of the extended shoulder yoke that goes all the way down the sleeve, um, to just uh, sleeve striping. Um, but anyway, yeah, some some nice subtle differences to uh, to talk about here. So, uh, Beepo, what's the best jersey those Winnipeg Jets ever wore? It's a very tough pick for me between you know their WHA set that they've you know brought back is kind of their her heritage classic look with some modifications, and their nineteen nineties set. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with the nineties set because while I I think that the WHA set is beautiful. Um, with and without the yoke, both variations. And there's a very odd vintage appeal to that logo to me that I don't get with many other things. I, I don't know why. It's not the greatest logo, just from an objective standpoint. It's dated, but there's something that I that I don't I don't know what it is. Um, it's like, I, this might be the one case that nostalgia, not even nostalgia, because I wasn't alive to see it, but, you know, something like that takes over for me. It doesn't happen often, as you know, if you've listened to the podcast, but... The 90s one, just looking at pictures of it, there's just something very clean looking about it, um, even though it's very simple striping. Um, just the way that the red pants play with the blue jersey, um, especially that one. It's the, I, There's just something really striking about it. I love the way the white stripe looks on that jersey. I, I don't really know how else to explain it. It's just a very striking look. Um, yeah. <laughs> Um, but also a weird thing that I'd found on Google just now looking up some pictures from the WHA set. There's a picture of a old fashioned uh, Jets WHA jersey like, you know, the with the same material you'd see in like the 70s and everything. But it has Mark Shifley on the back and it's being marketed as a current Heritage Classic jersey. <laughs> it's the strangest thing I've seen. That's really interesting. If anyone's the proud owner of that, uh, let us know. We'd be interested. Um, and anywho, yeah, I completely agree with um, with, with with the things you had to say. You know, they're they're seventy, um, seventy three. You know, they're they're, they're mid seventies. W H A look, um, is definitely you know iconic. It's the the look that they've that the the current Winnipeg Jets have have somewhat chosen to uh, revive in their in their own way. Um, with the the heritage classic uniforms, um, but but there's just something about those '90s Jets uniforms um, that's that's just really really nice, and um, you know because I think of when we think of the, the the Winnipeg Jets, you know, like my mind goes to what they wore in the '80s, um, but what they had in the '90s was surprisingly better. You know, I, I'm personally a fan of you know, sleeve striping over extending the yoke down the entire sleeve. I feel like that looks, it, I think sleeve striping just looks better. And so having, you know, consistent sleeve striping and hem striping, um, not bothering to put a red outline on the, the numbers at all, despite having, you know, red striping all around. I, I, I like it personally. And so, you know, I think their, their mid seventies WHA is a, it's, it's a good look. It's definitely a, a runner up, but, uh, I like white numbers on blue better than I like red numbers on blue, I guess. Okay, so let's move on to deciding what's the worst uniform, whether in WHA or NHL, that the Winnipeg Jets ever did wear. Personally, I think they kind of fall into the same category as the Devils, where they've never had a bad jersey, but their worst one that I'm about to uh, point out is pr probably mediocre at worst. Um, and it's their inaugural NHL set that they wore uh, with minor changes from 79 to 90. Uh, looks like the main thing that they changed uh, from those two is the font itself. Um, and, oh, and the sock striping changed. Um, but overall, minor details, considering the rest of the jersey is mostly the same. Um, so I, I feel safe to lump them together here. It's just something that hasn't aged well, the type of, you know, shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder striping that just goes straight down. Um, you know, there's obviously teams that pull it off today, but there's usually a bit more dynamicism to that. 
with like Columbus or Philadelphia having some curves in there. Um, but I just looking at old pictures of that, it just looks very dated and it just hasn't held up nearly as well as any of the other jerseys here, you know, have. So again, it's mediocre at worst. It's not bad at all. It's just kind of the odd one out in a fairly strong uh, jersey category or jersey catalog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking through their whole history, you know, WHA and NHL, you know, there there are some you know pretty interesting jerseys. Um, you know, initially, I thought, oh, maybe the initial nineteen seventy two to seventy three jersey could be bad because it's got a really different logo on it that just says Jets. Um, and it's got this weird uh, nameplate thing going on. It's like a rounded, colored, rounded rectangle behind the name um, with with a different color on, on, t- on top of that so you can see the name. And, and not it, to mention the font they have on that nameplate, too. Yeah, it's really weird and really interesting. Um, but looking at images of it, it looks pretty dang nice. Honestly, I can't complain about that jersey. Um, so I, I'd say my, my, my runner-up might be their, their last WHA set the nineteen seventy eight to seventy nine look with the the white shoulder yoke um thrown on to the blue jersey I feel the white jersey looks fine it's the blue jersey that really just bugs me um but I will agree with you as far as the NHL goes it's their you know seventy nine to ninety overall look that's definitely pretty bad you know I can't stand that that sleeve to sleeve whole striping. Um, I'd say that 1980 to 90 look is worse than the 7980 because I like the consistency of the sock stripes on that initial um, NHL set more than I like the striping uh, on the socks um, from the 80, the decade of the 80s, I guess. Um, yeah, so as, as much as, you know, as much as we, I'd say we, we think of the Winnipeg Jets um, when, when seeing these, these 1980s jerseys, um, they're, they're the worst that they've ever had, as far as the NHL goes. I was about to say that their 80-90 to 90 set, the socks are consistent just in a different way. Because, like, if you look at the jersey from, like, the sleeve from the side, for example, you got, like, red, blue, red. But then I looked at the socks, and they reversed the colors for some reason. So, never mind, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you almost had a Jets, but never mind. Like, if the blue socks would have been white, red, white, then it would have just mirrored that you know, shoulder yoke thing. And same with the other one, if they went red, blue, red, instead of blue, red, blue, they would mm-hmm. have had it consistent just in a different way. But nope. It's, I think it's funny how, you know, looking at the, the, the current iteration of the Winnipeg Jets, everyone seems to love and embrace their, their heritage classic looks, which are, you know, based off of their mid WHA looks in the mid seventies. Um, but it's interesting that, you know, the Winni- the original Winnipeg Jets used nothing but, you know, like a, a pretty straight medium royal blue and red, um, whereas the, the current Winnipeg Jets um, have elected to use a, a navy with those uniforms um, instead of, you know, using the, the lighter blue that's actually, you know, historically correct. And so it's, it's interesting to see fans, you know, seem to embrace them just as much despite them being a completely different color scheme. Um, and I, I can't deny that the Adidas template definitely makes the jerseys look, you know, a lot better. Um, you know, less, you know, d- definitely makes them look more put together, I would say, as a whole set. I mean, I've definitely mentioned this before, but just seeing some of these old jerseys on modern templates just kind of improves the way that they look just because I guess we're kind of, you know, it's what we're used to seeing now. They look more modern. They look more up to date. And it's it could be the exact same design just on a modern template. And, you know, for some reason, the modern one just looks better, at least to me anyways. Absolutely. You know, sometimes you, you, you think of like a throwback jersey and you think, oh, that jersey looked so nice. or that jersey would look so cool now. And you go back and watch like old highlights of it. Like if I'm watching like old American football highlights and they show a close up, I'm just like that entire jersey is mesh like that looks terrible <laughs> up close from a from a uh, you know like a technical standpoint but from a from a design perspective you know we can appreciate these these older jerseys for sure um but you know, we we can't deny that they look pretty dang good on current templates if they're designed well that is 
Like, I, I do not want to see the 1980s Winnipeg Jets look on a current template at all. I want to see it, but I don't want to see it more than other things. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, let's be honest. I'd be intrigued to see literally any jersey from in NHL history on a modern template, but that doesn't mean it should be done, you know? What would be the, the weirdest old jersey to put on a modern template? This isn't an old jersey, but... Imagine the Colorado Avalanche's Reebok Edge set on an Adidas template. Why? Why would you I don't say know. that? Why would you do that? <laughs> um, yeah, if I had to throw just an initial vote in, um, I'd say the 1930 Philadelphia Quakers would be amazing to see in a current set. <laughs> kind of just... speaking of that, I'd love to see one of the Pittsburgh Pirates uniforms on a current set, namely either that 1925 to 28 one or the 2931. And, you know, it, I'm talking about the NHL Pittsburgh Pirates, um, not the MLB ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, while we're, talk- while we're talking about, you know, defunct NHL teams, why not go back to the uh, the 1919 Quebec Bulldogs, who have incredible sock striping. It's just a bunch of blue and white stripes repeating endlessly, infinitely. Why don't and we have that have, in the NHL uh, these days? They have nothing on their jersey. Uh, they just have a stripe. Um, but yet, this thing is still better than Tampa Bay's current alternate jersey. You heard it here, folks. The Quebec Bulldogs have better overall uniforms than the Tampa Bay Lightning. We said it here. We'll stand by it. That That's exactly what I just said, yes. That's exactly <laughs> what you just said. That, that's not a straw man at all. <laughs> The Quebec Bulldogs have a better logo on their jersey than the Tampa Bay Lightning, <laughs> which is no logo at all. We're we're joking, in case you can't tell. That's a that's that's a very hot take and one that we uh we don't fully support. It's usually better to have a logo on your jersey than not, unless your jersey is just like so iconic it doesn't need it. Um, but very few teams in the NHL have that these days. I say it's close to zero. Either- do the Rangers count for that? That's technically that's still a word mark on their jersey, you know. Yeah, it's still something, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think, what 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 teams could survive without having anything on their front, and you could still tell it's them. I mean, I'd say Montreal. Montreal. Home. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, probably if if you knew your hockey, probably Vegas, just because their color scheme is so unique. If you knew your hockey, I mean, you can easily tell whose jersey is whose without a logo on it. It might but take you a second for some of them, but overall, yeah. What about Arizona's Kachina jersey? Which is nothing on the front. This makes me wonder when the last time it was that a team actually wore a jersey in the NHL without a logo on the front of it on a regular basis. That's a really all, interesting really. That's a really interesting question. Um, I recently watched a, um, a, a TSN bar down video quiz on NHL goal horns. And I was shocked to find out that the, the first goal horn wasn't used until like the early to mid eighties. It's funny. Cause we, that's just such an integral part of hockey now. Like we can't imagine there not being a goal horn. Yeah. I didn't know that to be honest. Right. But it, it wasn't a thing until the eighties. Which is like you think of how long the sport has been around. Um, that, that's 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 incredible to think of. You know, all this history. You know, talking about all these teams that don't exist anymore today, and um, to uh, you know appreciate what once was, and ever shall be. I'm also backtracking a little bit, but I feel like the Ottawa Senators, uh, you know, current alternate slash those heritage ones that we talked about before, um, the Heritage Classic and the uh, Heritage Alternate. I feel like those could survive without a logo on the front, especially considering the predecessor did. Perhaps, yeah. I mean, the, the it's just having an like a, a serif O on the front of your jersey. That's not much of a logo anyway. Fair, but it's it's something that's there, you know. Definitely, yeah. I mean, you know, the the original Ottawa Senators from the twenties just had a bunch of red, white, and black stripes. So I guess that's you know. It's hard to miss when you do that. Um, just don't do what the Montreal Canadiens did um, with their um, white 
red and blue striped uniforms that they brought back for for a game i think i mean i don't hate that they brought them back for a game because they had worn them you know i'm not saying they looked good but you know it was at one point a design trend do i want to call that a trend um you Let's know, call a it lot, a trend. Back in the day, a lot of teams, you know, had the barber pole striping. So for historical reasons, especially for an 100th anniversary, I don't dislike the fact that they brought it back for a game, even though it did not look good. Yeah, what if what if the Washington Capitals were just like, yeah, we're just going to go with a bunch of stripes to honor the uh, American flag or something? I'm not sure that one would work, but uh, you know what? Go ahead, um, mock it up, send it to the Capitals, see what they think. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of speaking of mocking things up, if you have any outlandish throwback inspired concepts or any other hockey jersey concepts, uh, send those into our concepts corner. Send an email to uh, jerseynerdsmedia at gmail dot com. Um, you know, tell us it's a concept submission and it should be featured in our uh, weekly concepts corner over on the website, which is jerseynerds dot com. Nice transition, Chris. Uh, thank you very much. I'm quite proud of that one. Yeah, so I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure to send in concepts. Um, go check out our new Redbubble store. Jersey Nerds has a Redbubble store. We're putting up these um, stickers of this little uh, little unisex figure, I guess, wearing all these different NHL jerseys. And so, you know, no matter what team you're a fan of, we'll have one up there. We've got the uh, we've, we've got a few up there to start, and we'll be putting more up as we go. So go and get those little stickers and put them on your thing if you're a you're a jersey nerd too uh i believe we've started with the pacific division correct and we started every, with pacific and every uh you know 2019 20 uh nhl uh jersey will be up there i don't know if we have the stadium series ones in the works just because those ones are a little bit more comp or complicated and may sort of tr- uh walk the fine line of copyright issues but uh other than that, I believe we have every single other one ready, right? Uh, indeed, we do. Every 2019-20 jersey is up. Um, stadium series, those might go up there. But then again, if you are the person that wants to buy a sticker that features a 2019-20 stadium series jersey, um, uh, I'm praying for you because you know if, if it's an L.A. or a Colorado one, I don't know why you would ever want that. I mean, um, if you manage to find a 2019-20 stadium series jersey that's not LA or Colorado, I'd be very impressed. Fair enough. <laughs> and uh, as always, uh, the links will be in the description for what we are promoting right now to our site, all of our socials, the Redbubble now, if you'd like to purchase any merchandise. Just if you don't want to type it in yourself, just scroll down to the description of the episode and you'll find everything there. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the end of the episode, you'll hear all the, the links to everything else. Uh, reach out to us. Tell us what you think of the the episode or the podcast. Um, um, if you have anything to, to say to us or anything you want us to talk about, let us know. We'll consider it. And uh, be yeah. sure to uh, check out the uh, L.A. Rams concept by Chris Ramirez. And on that note, this has been a great episode. Thanks to Beepo for joining us. Huge <laughs> shout out to, to Brooks for um, taking the time for that interview. And we'll, uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you for listening to the Jersey Nerds podcast. Check out our website at jerseynerds.wordpress.com to find the latest news, concepts, podcasts, and more. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore Jersey Nerds. You can find Chris on Twitter at C Ramirez, C-A-L-I-F, and on Instagram at Chris Ramirez Creative. You can find Hunter on Twitter at OpenSZN39 and on Instagram at HJ.Design661. You can find Beepo on Twitter and Instagram at BPCDesign, or just find all the links down in the description of the episode.